We've now seen that in the presence of externalities, markets can produce too little or too much relative to the socially optimal quantity. When the externalities are negative, there are non-market participants that are incurring costs in addition to those that are captured in the supply curve, so that the social marginal cost curve lies above the supply curve. That results in a socially optimal quantity where social marginal cost intersects demand. But the market produces where supply intersects demand. So the market will produce goods for which the social marginal cost is above the social marginal benefit, and that creates a deadweight loss in the market. In the case of positive externalities, there are non-market participants that incur positive benefits that are not captured in the demand curve, so that the social marginal benefit curve now lies above the demand curve, and the socially optimal quantity is where social marginal benefit intersects supply. But the market produces where demand intersects supply, so the market produces too little. And as a result, it gives up on producing goods where the social marginal benefit is above the social marginal cost, leaving some potential surplus on the table. That creates a deadweight loss. Now, we know from our treatment of taxes and subsidies that when we impose taxes and subsidies, we change the quantity that's produced in the market. And that insight caused an economist named Pigou to think about using taxes and subsidies in markets with externalities to eliminate deadweight losses. Those taxes and subsidies are called Pigouvian taxes and subsidies. So these are taxes and subsidies on goods in markets with externalities and they're aimed at eliminating the deadweight loss in those markets. So we can see the intuition of that in our graphs. We see in this graph that the socially optimal quantity is the quantity where social marginal cost intersects demand. If we bring that down to this picture, where we just have our demand and supply curves, we see that that's below the quantity that the market would produce in equilibrium. Now if I just gave you this lower picture and I said, could you construct a policy that causes the market not to produce the market quantity, but rather this quantity, you could simply dip into your toolkit and say, well sure, we could use taxes. If we just impose the tax, of this size, a pre-unit tax of this size on this good, we would create a wedge to the left of the equilibrium where the higher price will be the price that consumers end up paying and the lower price will be the, end, the price that firms will end up paying. And markets will produce that lower quantity rather than the quantity at the intersection of demand and supply. Well, that's exactly what a Pigouvian tax is in this case. We know from our upper graph that we'd like to produce this socially optimal quantity, and so we can impose a tax on causing and then cause the market to produce that quantity. By causing the market to reduce its output, we keep it from creating this deadweight loss, and so we eliminate the deadweight loss. In the case of a positive externality, we know we'd like to produce this socially optimal quantity where social marginal cost intersects the supply curve. So we can bring that down, and if I just gave you that picture and said, well, how could you get the market to produce this quantity rather than the quantity at the intersection of demand and supply, you could simply dip back into your toolkit and say, well, we can simply impose a per unit subsidy of this amount, where we know that at the upper end of that wedge will be the price that firms receive, and the lower price will be the price that consumers pay. As a result of creating that subsidy wedge, the market is going to produce this quantity rather than the original equilibrium quantity. And by causing the market to produce this quantity, 
were causing the market to go ahead and pick up that additional surplus that it was leaving on the table when it simply produced where demand was equal to supply. That's called a Picuvian subsidy, a subsidy that's put in place in the market in order to cause the market to produce more and eliminate the deadweight loss from a positive externality. So we can see that while taxes and subsidies create deadweight losses in the absence of externalities, when we have externalities, taxes and subsidies have the potential of eliminating deadweight losses. That's because when there is an externality, the price is already distorted. It's distorted by the presence of that externality away from a price that would cause the market to produce the optimal quantity. So we can re-distort that price back to a price where the market now has an incentive to produce the optimal quantity.